So this isn't really going to be a tutorial. This is just me showing how I make survivor mods. So I first check the models resource and see if there are any models I'd like to port. But since I'm looking for Moxie, a character who was never in a video game, this website won't give me anything. I'll need to look elsewhere. Oh yeah, DeviantArt has some custom models. In fact, here's one made by Seamanker Cat for VR chat. Now before I start working on this model or do anything, always check the artist's permissions for the model before anything. Oh. Yeah, yeah, it's fine to use. Thank you. Now that I've got the model, I need to decide who Moxie will go over. I'll go with Nick. In Blender, I import Francis because he's the tallest survivor, and I use him as a reference to scale by. I don't want Moxie to be as tall as Nick, but I don't want him too short for his animations to bug out. So I try to find the right balance of height. You might have noticed that I'm using an older version of Blender. I would have used the newer version, but Blender updated, and I can't weight paint properly. Steam wouldn't even allow me to roll back to an older version. So here's 2.79. Hey, update here. They updated Blender again and now the rollback version's back. Thanks, Steam. Here's when I'm posing Nick's skeleton to Moxie's. Move the thighs, upper arms, and spines to the same spots as Moxie's, but I don't do the calves and forearms yet. Because Moxie has only two spines instead of Nick's four, I move Nick's first two bones to Moxie's first spine bone. Then I move the other two to the second one. You might have noticed that I purposely left the pelvis bone alone. I only do that with survivor mods. And that is to prevent certain animations being in cap or getting pounded by a charger from clipping through the ground. Or floating, even. Here I've rotated the thigh bones to aim straight down, so that when I move the cow up and down, it won't distort Nick's legs. I only want to shorten the length of his legs, not reposition them to look like he's a Gmod crap. I'll try to move him as close as possible to Moxie's original calf position. Once placed, I need to adjust the feet. Now Source games have IK rules, which allows the feet to touch the ground. The IK works best when the bone's position matches the same distance between it and the ground. Basically, I look at Nick's shoes and move the bones to make his feet touch the ground. I rotate them so that Moxie's feet won't look off when in game. Once the bones have been positioned, I re-rotate the thigh bones, this time to match Moxie's leg position, unlike aiming it straight down. Then, I rotate the calves just like the thighs, making sure that they too match Moxie's calves. Finally, I tweak the feet and make sure Nick's feet are flat on the ground. Although the feet bones don't match Moxie's feet position-wise, it'll still look fine as the difference is minimal. I apply the same methods for the arm bones. The hands are similar to the feet. First I rotate the hands that have them match each other's knuckle placement. So you want knuckles matching almost. I also position the hands further back from Moxie's hand bones. Doing this ensures that A. You can see the guns being held, and B. Adjusts how Moxie will hold two-handed weapons. Posing the fingers can be very difficult, but I've discovered a little trick. By setting the transform orientation from global to local, the red arrow will now point in the direction where the selected finger bone is aimed at. I can then rotate the finger bones without creating too much distortion of the fingers. If there are any issues with fingers, those can easily be fixed. Before I apply the new pose of Nick's skeleton as the rest pose, I have to rename all of Moxie's bones to Nick's bones. This is so the weights in Moxie's model will transfer over to Nick's skeleton. Although I could only rename the weights and not the bones, naming the bones changes the weights names, but not vice versa. Basically, changing the bones makes it easier to rig test. 
Once I finish posing and I'm happy with how the skeleton looks, I first make a save. Then after that, I'll make yet another save. This way, if I do all the work on Moxie but I did something wrong with posing the skeleton, I'll have a backup save that I can load and fix since applying the pose will reset and mix and mesh to the T pose, resetting my guide. Eye tracking in source won't work well with hollowed out eyes such as this model. However, I could make a flat mesh inside Moxie's eyes to get it to work. The only issue is, will blinking look bad if I do this? Nope. I can make custom eye tracking with blinking support. Nice. Making the facials is time consuming, and to save everyone's time, I just copy the look of what Nick's facials are and just apply them to Moxie. Whether I use pre-existing ones, added them, I merge them, or I make my own. The only noticeable thing here is that I will be using the blink flex instead of the eyelid flexes. Nick has some helper bones. I'll be giving Moxie some bicep helpers, knees, ongles, and wrists. Helper bones basically reduce their being gross twisting. Helper bones off, helper bones on. Here I'm prepping the tail and cloth bones for jiggle bones. The important thing to know is that the z-axis must aim down for wherever you want gravity to be. If your bone was curved, for example, and you had a gravity enabled, the jiggle bone will rotate itself until its own z-axis aims down. Here's a tip. If your jiggle bone is moving backwards in the game, move the tail and bone the opposite direction. I've made a copy of the mesh and now I'm deleting parts of it. I'm making the collision model. The only reason why I'm making the collision model is because of the pelvis bone. If Moxie ever ragdolls, his pelvis will scrunch up inside his torso and it will look bad. Making my own prevents this. I'm making an eye texture, as I can't just use the original Moxie texture, or else the eyes will just be that entire body texture. Since this eye is more oval than round, I can't just use Source's pre-made eyeball textures with him. So for its cornea texture, I would just use a small grayish yellow square with almost all of it being translucent. I was debating on making the iris of the eye transparent, since things that aren't transparent for the eye will be very shiny, but that wouldn't really look as cartoonish, so I made the entire eye practically translucent. Now it's on to editing Nick's QC file. I changed the model name for the model viewer. I changed the eyes names to Moxie's eyes, which I just named Eyeball L and Eyeball R, and the flexes. Since I'm using the blink flex, I have to change the first flexes that and remove the other eye flexes. I also need to remember them, since there's less flexes now. At the bottom, below the animations and above the collision, I added the four lines that call in the size of portion tree. I've made a detailed guide on Steam if you want to learn more about it for your mods. In the collision model section, I add in the tails and cloths used in the physics model here and leave the numbers all zero for now. Sadly, jiggle bones don't stay on when ragdolls are used. I've compiled the model in the model viewer and there's already some issues. Mainly, the eyes don't move. This is usually fixed by adjusting the eyes Y position in the QC. After tweaking the eyes, I now have working eye tracking along with working facials. Moxie can now look and speak. I've noticed that when I had him hold a weapon, he grips the gun too close to his fingertips instead of his palm. I'll have to go back in Blender and fix the skeleton. To fix this, I move the hand bones further back, along with keeping the finger bones in place. This will make Moxie grip his weapons closer to his palms. After another compile and a refresh, it's now in his palms. There can still be a few more adjustments, such as his index finger being too far away from the trigger, but that's pretty good. Okay, I can't explain this since I still don't fully understand it. I'm adding Jiggle Bones in the QC file. I'll leave a link of implementing Jiggle Bones in the description. I just have trouble understanding it since I'm more of a visual one. I mean, I'm pretty sure that things like yaw dampness doesn't involve water. Right? Here I'm moving the physics bones of the tails and claws. I'm just rotating and moving it to positions I like, copying the values and adding it to the QC. Simple. 
As I was moving forward with final edits to the QC file, I forgot about the attachments. Thankfully, Mr. Funreel made a model where I can precisely place the attachments on Moxie. I'll still have to edit the bleed-out attachment, which is where the blood puddle spawns when the encounter dead, since again, I left the pelvis bone alone, but other than that though, this helps out, saves a lot of time, removes guesswork. Here are the new hitboxes for Moxie. I made a separate notepad showing me which values affect which side of the hitbox. Hitboxes only matter on single player or local servers, since official servers still use NIX. Now the only thing left to test are the facial animations, which can also be loaded in the face posing. I normally go solo, but under the circumstances I'm thinking we stick together. Call me Nick. You got names? Once everything looks good, I start making the HUD icons for the game. This is just giving Moxie a gun and a pose, changing his face and screenshotting it with the control print screen. I made the background green to give myself a green screen, so that I could cut Moxie out and slap him in on an icon. The icons I used are made by Space and Tiny King Crashman. Now the in-game icon, the left foot at two survivors who face towards you, while the left foot at one cast face to the left. The in-cap is just the dual pistol animation mirrored or flipped. Once I'm done making the icons, I save them and disable MIP maps. You don't need them for the icons. It's just a waste of space, and if they are used, the icons will look even more low res than usual. Making the view model is a pain, but basically you copy the mesh and delete the body first. Then you move the arms to position the hands to the survivor's hands and work a little backwards. Unlike posing Nick's arms to Moxie's, we'll still do that, but not with his fingers. It's best for view models to instead pose Moxie's bones to match Nick's fingers, as that will reduce weirdly bent fingers. We also cannot apply the size proportion trick here because the animations are from the guns, not hands. If you were to make the proportion trick with all the guns, then your hands will work, but every other survivor's hands will break. Edit the arms to match the lengths of nips. It should be mentioned that the view model's bones have a different name, so don't forget to rename your arms' bones accordingly. Now Moxie didn't have any fingertips weighted, so I had to make my own. It's always best to have fingertips for your view model whenever it's possible. With that out of the way, I can test to see if some of the moving bones look odd or not, such as the fingers, the forearms, the hands. After that, the view model is done. Back in the model viewer, and here's the arms loaded in. The screen looks like this because having it full screen will hide most of the view model. Here we can test if the arms look strange with animations, such as the aiming, moving, and reloading. We can also test the FOV and see if something like 84 will show the inner arms. That looks fine. Let's compile it all and test it in game. Here I'm in Mr. Funreel's Tumtara map, and I'll just mess around for a bit. Let's see if the hitboxes work. Anything that spurts out blood is where the hitboxes are.
Now there's one problem left, and that's the wrist helper. Nick's wrist is special, where it actually moves as well as rotates, unlike everyone else's. Sadly, this involves boring math. But by getting the values to move the same distance as the original values, we can fix the wrist. Finally, after doing all that, the wrists are all fixed, and I now have the final version. Alright, you guys ready? Yes, I'm gang. So, so. <laughs> Time yeah. to get going. Sure yeah, thing, let's go. I do some more testing with the model, such as the ragdoll, online sport, as well as just playing around with it, just to make sure that nothing pops up as I'm testing. With the recent release of The Last Stand, I had to remake every Zoe mod I ever made because of the light model, a model that's basically Zoe with about 5 animations, that's only used for the first level of passing, would consistently crash every time someone would play on that level. Do I think that would happen with this Moxie mod? No. But it never hurts to check. When you remember to, of course. Anyway, that's basically how I poured the Moxie over to Left 4 Dead 2. My way. Not a tutorial. I don't know what this video is, but I just wanted to do something on this dead channel. You know, it's not all right that you are shooting me. Enjoy. Really? I haven't seen any.